Hello, my name is uh, Bruce Scott, and I'm the Director of Partnership and Communication at the International Livestock Research Institute, uh, based in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, my first uh, visit to Ilri was uh, the official opening of the International Laboratory for Research on Animal Diseases, ILRAD, in March 1978. And I was invited uh, because I represented a, do a donor agency to ILRAD, the International Development Research Center, IDRC. And the opening was uh, presided over by the then Vice President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, who then became President, Daniel Arab Moy. And I remember thinking to myself, uh, what a dynamic, um, a creative and innovative leader uh, Kenya was uh, about to assume uh, when he took over as president. I joined uh, Ilri uh, as a staff member in uh, 1999, uh, having come from uh, being Deputy Director General for the International uh, Center for Research in Agroforestry, ICRAF, uh, having spent 12 years there. Um, so I came across town from ICRAF headquarters to ILRI headquarters, uh, and my first position at ILRI was the Director of Corporate Services. And so I was responsible for um, finance, administration, operations, uh, human resources, um, board of Trustees, Functions, IT, etc. Uh, currently, I'm a Director of Partnership and Communications. When we, in 2002-2003, we developed uh, a new uh, amended strategy for, uh, for ILRI, under the leadership of Carlos Serre, and after the board had adopted the strategy uh, Pathways Out of Poverty, um, uh, Carlos and his senior team put together a new management structure. And part of that change in the structure was to uh, have a division which was responsible for our external relations, which we called Partnerships and Communications. And I believe for the first time uh, at ILRI, we were able to bring together all of the different disparate units that were dealing with elements of partnership, resource mobilization, communications, uh, IT, all under one umbrella. And I think uh, since then we've been a much more cohesive, much more cohesive in terms of the the communications, the messaging, the, the public uh, awareness activities, our knowledge management activities, um, having it all under one, one uh, directorship than we had been in the past. I think some of the, the main changes that I've uh, observed over, over the last 10 years, and these were, uh, they weren't haphazard, they were quite deliberate. Um, um, first of all, I guess from an external point of view, uh, Ilri's, the funding of, the structure of funding to Ilri changed, um, as it did for many centers and for the CGIER as a whole. Um, but we went from an institute which was reliant upon unrestricted funds uh, to one which was dependent upon uh, uh, restricted grants. And so we had to change gears over the last 10 years quite dramatically in terms of how we went about raising funding um, and then how we utilize those funds. And it wasn't just in terms of building our relationships with our principal investors and partner development partners, but also a dramatic change within uh, the staffing of the Institute in terms of, of uh, the responsibility that all staff had in terms of, of raising funds to ensure that we could do good high quality research and science uh, to benefit the poor. The second major 
shift that I've seen over the last 10 years is uh, an institute that has moved from being supply driven, in other words, we were determining what was needed in terms of good science and good research, to one, an institute which is much more responsive to demands, uh, to trying to address development problems, uh, and looking at how science can in fact contribute to solving those problems. Um, uh, I think in that process we've shifted from an institution which was only focused on outputs and most of those were in the form of uh, pu written publications to an institute which is much more concerned with um, uh, outcomes of its work, uh, the impact of its work, uh, trying to assess that, to monitor it, to evaluate it, uh, and try to draw lessons uh, from, from the work that we're doing in terms of uh, how we can improve the evidence based of our work. Now that had a, a, also a major shift in terms of how ILRI went about doing its work. And whereas when I first joined ILRI, I would say a large percentage of the activities that ILRI was involved with were actually contained within the confines of, of the Institute uh, to one in which today 100% of all of our activities are done in partnership with other institutions ranging right across the board from community and farmer groups to advanced research institutions. And that has also had a major implication in terms of how we go about our work um, uh, and uh, ranges from all of the needs. It, it really becomes a shift in the way you manage research. It's not, not just a uh, a question of signing memorandum of understanding, but, but it's really a psychological shift for individuals as well as for the institution uh, to realize that we uh, are doing things together with others um, in, in situations we're not, where we're not necessarily in control of what, what is happening on, uh, within the confines of our partners, etc. So that's been a, a, a significant shift in the way we manage research. Um, uh, and we're far from perfect at it. I think we're conscious and aware of the importance of it. And I think we need to keep working very hard to improve the efficiency of how we work with our partners to make sure that we're more effective uh, in, the, in the work that we're conducting. Another um, important shift that I've observed and, and witnessed is um, I would say that ILRI has, has uh, become much more visible uh, in terms of the work that we do, um, the impact that we're having, um, uh, uh, and we've done that in a very conscious and, and systematic way to uh, improve our external, particularly our external communications, our public awareness, our knowledge management activities. We've really tried to shift the paradigm whereby um, we're making our information, our knowledge, travel uh, and travel in areas and in speeds that we could never have dreamt uh, would happen ten years ago. Of course a lot of this is the result of of uh, our connectivity um, and also all sorts of new social media tools that are available to everyone um, but which uh, ILRI has been able to utilize and capitalize in terms of, of uh, ensuring that we're much more accessible, much more visible um, to literally hundreds of thousands of people whereas in the past when we relied upon the print form of, of communication, we were really limiting ourselves to thousands of people uh, as opposed to hundreds of thousands of people. So that's, that's, uh, had a, that's been a major uh, change and shift in terms of, of, of um, ensuring that, that the work that ILRI is doing 
is better understood and made available on a much wider basis um, throughout the world. I, I just yeah. wanted to mention one other um, uh, issue in terms of the how we work, which I think is also very uh, uh, important. Um, we, over the last 10 years, uh, under Carlos's leadership, we've um, really shifted our, our paradigm from doing the work to making sure the work gets done. Um, and part of that shift was by establishing a number of, of platforms where we're able to invite in a range of different partners to use our facilities um, for their own purposes and not necessarily for furthering the objectives and mission of, of, uh, of ILRI. The best known uh, platform that we're we have underway right now is the Biosciences for Eastern and Central Africa, um, which really is a, uh, an opportunity to um, provide the best sci scientific biosciences facilities, in, certainly in this region, to a, a large range of different partners. But we have other platforms that we're, we're um, uh, involved with in terms of managing. We have a, a regional program that looks at uh, a whole range of food security issues, which is referred to as RESACs, uh, well beyond the livestock issues, but including livestock issues. We've actually transformed our campus in Ethiopia, uh, which is a principal site for, for ILRI, uh, from one uh, a campus which was really just self-contained ILRI activities, uh, to a multi-user campus and so we now have eight or nine uh, other organizations which are sharing our facilities many of them other CGIER centers uh, it's that that platform has enabled scientists from a community of scientists really to work much more closely together from a whole range of different disciplines I don't think Hillary would have made as many advances on the issues of livestock and water uh, if we had not been cohabiting uh, on the Addis Ababa campus with the International Water Management Institute, IMI, um, as an example. Um, we've also transformed uh, uh, the, camp the headquarters campus here in Nairobi uh, to really a, a hub for, for excellence in biosciences as it applies to agriculture. Um, and so we have a number of other institutions on this campus that are uh, we're hosting, such as the African Agriculture Technology Foundation (AATF), um, the uh, International uh, Institution for the Acquisition of Agricultural Biotechnology (ESA). We have um, the International Potato Centers Biotechnology Program based here and then a whole range of users who are using the Becca facilities, both CG centers as well as, as others. So the nature of both campuses over the last 10 years has changed from one which was really a, uh, uh, if you wish, an Ilri tower, I was not necessarily ivory tower, but an Ilri tower to one which are, there's a whole range of different uh, partners, institutions, uh, and as a result of that, tremendous more vibrancy uh, in terms of the uh, scientific enterprise uh, which is taking place here. And I think as a result of all of these different factors, I think Ilri's international reputation has moved from one which was doing interesting and good science to an institution which is relevant and really a hub for uh, attracting uh, a range, uh, advancing the whole, all of the issues related to agriculture sciences um, to solve development problems. In five years from now, I think ILRI has an important role and contribution to make in continuing to advance the issues of livestock um, as it relates to development. Um, and be seen as the 
the go-to place to get a better understanding of what the issues are, how one can solve certain problems uh, as it, from a, a livestock perspective. So I would like to see Ilri being recognized and known as the premier livestock institute in the world which has information and knowledge based on strong scientific evidence that can lead to um, uh, uh, strong development solutions to these problems. Um, I personally believe that ILRI should be playing a much stronger advocacy role um, uh, in the de on the debates related to development, to sustainable development, on environmental issues, on climate change issues, um, etc. Because I think we do have a significant amount of information, knowledge um, that people are in fact uh, uh, interested in and in increasingly looking to us to provide um, uh, those, the, uh, that information, those solutions, uh, etc. And thirdly, I think I would like to see Ilri being much more prominent on some of the international um, global debates uh, uh, related to whether it's environment development uh, or what have you, um, uh, and uh, being much more aggressive and, and uh, as I said, visible. Um, and finally, um, I think it's important that Ilri continue to develop and be known to have be the experts in a number of specialized fields. And it would be nice if we did have, in fact, some uh, very significant scientific breakthroughs uh, that not only affect agriculture, but affect uh, the, the development process uh, as a whole. So I think uh, those are a number of the things that I would feel extremely proud of if, in five years if we would be, be able to achieve and be recognized for some of these.